Prologue Go Way Back have recently released their demo to the public. And we got to try it out. Is it any good? Is it an actual walking simulator? Who knows? Seems pretty damn good so far though. I've jumped in, we've spent about two hours in there, and it is pretty much start the game at one location, make your way to the next. All of the hardcore elements are in there. It is a walking simulator. There is no save game, so you can't save it and restart later at a later date. You have to do it in one hit, and every time you play, the map completely refreshes itself. So there is no sort of go-throughs. You've got to do this in one hit. Now, the longest session I had on the game was an hour, and I didn't make it in that hour. And it is a bit of a pain in the ass. I think you probably need two to three hours to sit down and go through this from start to end. There are a lot of cool things in there. It is not just a walking simulator. If you are a fan of Prologue Go Way Back and want to check it out, make sure you head over to their Steam page. The demo is available now. Don't know when it's actually ending. There's been no news on that yet, but it has been playable since June the 9th. Now, the demo revolves around four hand pit maps that cycle with no time limit per round. Now, the maps are four different ones on a run through, but the starting and finish locations, I believe, are different on each one. So you can it can change. So there are more instances than just those four different maps. Now, I've played it six times, I think. And yeah, bit a bit of a confusing one. It does start you in somewhere completely different and then it makes it harder to actually get to those end locations that you want to get to. But overall, enjoyable. Systems are good. Performance, not the greatest. At the moment, I wouldn't pay for it, I don't think. I wouldn't want to pay much anyway. They've not said how much they're going to release it for. But for what it is, free demo, cool, something good to check out. But yeah, other than that, definitely not worth any money at the moment. I think the systems are there could be a cool game but this is basically part two of their tech test they've already done this first part which was um preface undiscovered world now we have covered that on the channel as well that is just very very basic tech test uh you spawn in on a randomly generated world and then that that's it you can walk around you can't do anything else that is a real walking simulator whereas prologue go way back does offer some different options such as fires, you have to eat, you have to keep your sustenance up, there's storms, there's all sorts of varying factors about the game which do make it quite interesting. So we'll jump in, have a little bit of a look at some of the gameplay elements that are in it and some of the pros and cons that are in the game so far. I do like the look overall and the idea is really good. It's fun, enjoyable, but only once... Harley, I'm... I'm... Okay, babe. So let's jump in, have a little bit of a look at the actual gameplay. We'll go through some of the positive and negative points and it just whether it's an enjoyable experience overall. I'd recommend checking out the demo if you're a fan of survival games because it is something most survival players will enjoy whilst it's free. When it comes to a paid product though, we'll have to wait and see what else they have to offer. Now when you do first get in, it is important to take note of your surroundings, grab all the stuff that you can find. There's a compass, there's a couple of cooking pots, there's some wood. There's also a map in the back corner over here as well. So make sure you grab all of those things and take a note of the map that's up here. That'll help you navigate the area a lot easier. Now it's getting late now and the storms are hitting pretty damn hard. The temperature's dropping quite quickly. And as you can see, it's piss wet through. There's a lot of weird noises. I don't know if there's any like threats in the game. So like bears and stuff like that. Not 100% sure if anything comes after you. I don't think so. But we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it is quite dark. That noise is not some sort of monster. Nope, that is actually the generator up and running in the back. Um, but setting fire. Now that is actually really quite cool. I enjoyed doing it. It's a little bit complex. Uh, first, you have to actually manually drop stuff in. Then get your ferro rod and knife. And then just slowly strike it in there. You've got to make sure everything is in a neat little bundle. Because otherwise it takes a while for it to actually go up. Especially if you're trying to burn like sticks and logs and stuff. So as you can see, the paper burns really quickly. But then trying to get the cardboard to light takes a little bit longer. And then slowly the sticks will start to light. Oh no, I don't want to throw my torch on there. Jesus. Now everything's nice, lit up. It's quite cool. And then outside your little hut that you're in, don't head off in the night. It's a bit of a silly idea. You've got some wooden logs and just some of the little bits down there. 
you can just bring inside and plop on the fire to keep you going through the night. And once you have grabbed everything that is in the room, you've just got your little mat and you're on your way. Wait till the weather's relatively good and then you can head on out. But as you can see, we are on the left hand side and we've got to figure out a way all the way over to that right hand point. I don't have any point of reference of where north, south or anything like that is. So I'm going to head out until we find water. If we can find water and then locate these grasslands here, that means at least we've got a sort of bearing on where we are. If we get to that location, it is pretty much a straight shot. The rain is an issue in the game, so that's something we're going to have to be looking out for. But overall, once you're out of there, performance is quite good. Works really well, runs smoothly. There's some slight stutters and... As you saw in the sort of music bit of the video where I showed you the um, the Walkman, then that that did make things go a little bit weird. I don't know whether it was because we had that on or not, but let's give it a listen again and see. But we've still got some slight stuttering, which is annoying. But the music's quite cool. I do like the idea of the little tape player. I don't know whether the battery will last long, but we'll see. Now we do have a problem and that problem is we've come out we've gone for a little bit of a stroll trying to find that water source and upon doing that realize we're on top of a massive ridge but those red lines are all around the you are here bit basically are basically a cliff it looks like we're on the top of a mountain so we've got to figure out a way to get down and then get to the water source which has me a little bit disorientated on which direction we're actually going to come off of this hill range so if we can find the right lake, so I am looking for the thick lake, just so we can sort of follow that down. But I'm not 100% sure I'm not really good at reading maps. So this might be a total disaster. So upon moving through the location, you will find various buildings like this. Some of these things have useful resources in, like a little bit of food. You may find fuses and fuse boxes that you need to power up to get into certain things. But overall, they can be quite useful. Items like tinned food. These are dotted all over the map, and that, I believe, is what the black circles are all about. Now, although it is mainly a walking simulator, some of the storms are quite cool. So as you can see, there's a hailstorm coming in right now. You go out in that, you start to get cold pretty damn quick. It doesn't do anything to your health, but being cold is definitely a pain in the ass. You want to try to stay as warm as possible. As long as you get the sort of flint and steel from that first house, You'll be able to set a fire anywhere really as long as you can get under a bit of shelter and it's not raining you'll be fine now it is important to note that when you do back out of a game that is it it won't save your progress so you it is a walking simulator and you do have to go through that starting process quite a few times if you've not got the time to sit there and play through it so it is a good idea to sort of just get out of the house as quickly as you can Figure out your surroundings. If you've gone the wrong way, next time you play it, go a different way. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether the tower position changes or not, but I don't think it does. Now, to make that even more complicated, each time you load in, you'll have a different map. So it does make it a little bit tougher. So yeah, every time you quit the game, it will restart a new game. Every time you start a new game, it is a completely different map. The houses, things like that, they're all the same. It's all sort of like pre uh, preset assets, I think. And then just they're just dumped in the world that they've made, which is procedural generated. So now, don't know where I am. I'm looks like at the bottom of some sort of ravine. And then we've got to head out over to the other side of the map. But I don't know if the map has changed massively or it's just sort of flipped round. But yeah, it's it's definitely a tough game. It's not something, if you want to sink a couple of hours into it, you can, but it's not really something you can go and come back to, unless you just want to keep doing the same run over and over again. There's a couple of interesting things you can do, you know, creating the fires and stuff, that process is actually really quite cool. Exploring some of the cabins is interesting as well, but overall, it is a walking simulator. It's an enjoyable one, it doesn't look the greatest, I think once they've ironed out a lot of those issues... Um, especially with like the flickering and the frames being everywhere. I've got a relatively decent PC. There's My PC's not struggling with it at all, but 
frames are relatively bad and drop quite a lot same with like some of the animations are just a bit odd as well but the little things like the fire lighting and exploring in the dark and through the storms that's quite cool the computer doesn't really kick up too much of a fuss there when the storms are coming in either now the whole point of this and the previous game that they released is to test their tech so it's definitely a massive step up on the previous one which was literally just a planet generator and then you just wander around planet from point to point there's nothing to do at all but it is interesting i think that's preface unknown worlds which i've done videos on that as well and yeah no i wouldn't recommend it it is literally a tech demo it's very boring played it for about half an hour but it is cool what they're trying to go for now that, ladies and gentlemen, is it from me today. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. If you have and you want to see more Prologue Go Way Back and more from the team on their basically massive tech demo that's going to be a big, explorable, open-world planet exploration at some point. That is the end goal anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. They want to make the biggest survival game that's ever been made. Hopefully that's something that does happen in the future, but not really crossing my fingers at the moment. For now though, I've been Wired, you've been awesome, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.